you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Aaron Edwards. He has a bunch of cool tools and stuff to check out. He's from WPMU Dev, but he's got this awesome project called Imagine. Uh, you want to spell that for us, Aaron? Sure. It's URL. I M A J I N N dot A I. So Imagine quick, AI. What's the quick pitch on what that is? Uh, the quick pitch is we're using like the latest uh, AI technology for image generation. But um, so we have kind of two sub products using that technology. The first is the Imagine plugin in WordPress. And that is basically a, like a Gutenberg block or admin page in your admin. And you can just type in any kind of image that you want to generate. And then it uses AI to generate that for you. And you can save it to your library or insert it into your post or page or course, whatever it may be. And uh, yeah, pretty amazing. And then we just launched a new kind of um, side project off of that technology to where you can actually train your own AI model with something like your face or a pet or a couple photo or even like product shots for e-commerce or uh, even like a style. Like if you have a brand style, you can train the AI in that and then you can generate any kind of images, including those subjects. It's pretty amazing technology. That is awesome. You're also known for infinite uploads. What's that? Yeah, uh, infinite uploads is a, a plugin that I launched with a friend a few years back, and it gives you basically extends your WordPress media library to cloud storage. So it gives you infinite amount of storage, essentially. So if you're like running out of storage or your media is running slow, you can just connect that plugin. We make it super simple to connect to our cloud storage, and then. You don't have to upgrade your hosting plan or anything like that. And um, you can just seamlessly expand your storage and it just goes straight to our cloud and is served from our CDN. So that's infinite uploads. That's awesome. And we're going to get back to both those, but let's start just with some current news. You and I both are into Web3 and digital assets and figuring out this whole next uh, next chapter in technology that's been happening. Um, recently, there was a collapse of the FTX exchange and F FTT token, um, which is called into question. A lot of people are, you know, scared or worried or getting out of Web3 or crypto. What What's your view on, um, you know, this new technology in the context of what we're seeing in the news right now in terms of, um, is this all a scam or is there real technology here? How do you, for somebody who's not down the rabbit hole like you or I, how do you explain uh, where we are on this current evolution of this new technology? Sure. Well, um, I guess like from the beginning, um, I, I found like this technology as, as being not really about like speculation and investment. Like I was more focused on like the underlying technology and what it could achieve and, um, actually playing with and, and building tools and projects off of that web three tech. So actually last year, founded um, web3wp.com and just kind of a um, group of people community where we're just experimenting with web web3 technology and learning about it more and seeing how it could apply to like wordpress or open source um, so we've gotten to do a lot and building and playing with tools like that nfts and, and and smart contracts and stuff like that but i still really strongly believe like in the underlying technology um the fact that centralized players or whatever people, bad actors, you know, are using this technology to scam people. I mean, that's always going to be the case with any technology, especially newer ones that people don't understand as well. And in all these cases, it's usually like some centralized actor, you know, so it's not even like an exchange like FTX. They're a centralization authority so you're depositing your tokens and everything with them and then trusting them to not mess around with it which of course greed got the better of them it seems like and uh caused a lot of people to lose a lot of money um and the smart people are 
they know that they need their own wallet and they can store it themselves, you know, and not trust some other third party to, to handle it for them. Um, and those people are still safe. But <laughs> yeah, I still very much believe in the technology and where it's going to go. And of course, right now with prices crashed and, and all this stuff in the news and things like that is shaking out a lot of the bad actors and I think what we'll see over the years is is the people who are building now and are building tools honestly and 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 based on the technology instead of just speculation and investment they're the ones that are going to be the next Google and Facebook or whatever you know in the coming years so I think it's a great time to build and invest even that's awesome and at a high level what do you think makes is special at the intersection of WordPress and Web3? You know, Web3 touches a lot of things. It touches finance, yeah. it touches um, identity, it touches uh, contracts, uh, you know, all kinds of things. But what about word, the intersection of WordPress and Web3? What's the opportunity set there? For sure. Well, I think like Web 2.0 was kind of the revolution to where you could create your own content on the internet easily, you know, whether that's social media or blogging and WordPress was one of the tools that popped up during that web 2.0 revolution. And um, <clears throat> it actually has stood out up till now because it allows you to have ownership of your own content still. So you're hosting it yourself. This is the wordpress.org, not.com, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so instead of it being centralized and whatever you write or type or your blog posts or whatever, being owned by some centralized big corporation, tech corporation or something, um, you can actually host and, and own that data yourself. And, and WordPress through its open source kind of foundations allows you to do that, which was revolutionary. And I think still is um, a real standout among the regular web 2.0 crowd. But I think that overall like ethos of just open source and owning your own data, I think that ties in really well with web three. And that's what it's about. It's about, decentralization um, and ownership and using like new technologies that allow you to do that um, in, in new and exciting ways, digital ownership of content, you know, whether it's through NFTs or, or tokens to, to handle voting rights and things like that. So I think it's really interesting to explore those intersections of technology. You think there's like, how do you think about um, like a website being decentralized? Is that even possible? Like, um, it seems like with WordPress, you know, you still have like hosting, you have to have a centralized host, but you know, there's things like Filecoin and all this technology behind that mm -hmm. for decentralized file storage or whatever. But I mean, not everything needs to be decentralized, I guess. And maybe, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to, if we look at WordPress specifically, where most people are building websites and web applications, mm -hmm. how will that be impacted the most by Web3? And and will they can a, can a website or a web application become truly decentralized? Coming at it from a WordPress angle. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some ways. Like for example, right now there's still a lot of centralization if you're hosting your own WordPress site. So you got to buy a domain. In a domain, you're buying from some organization, some corporation, and you're trusting that they're not gonna take it away or remove it, or the government is not gonna have it taken down. You know. Um, so that's one issue. I've had domains that have been taken offline just because someone filed a false report that it had malware on it. Mm. And that crashed like thousands of our customer websites. And oh, it's wow. like, oh my gosh, it's like, <laughs> there's no control. You don't really own it. You know, people say you own domains, but you don't truly. And in Web3, there's already some solutions people trying to solve that, like the um, ENS. Yeah, ENS um, domain to where. It's actually decentralized and those domains are actually on the blockchain and immutable and no one can take them away from you. You know, um, it can't be changed. Um, and then you have the whole centralization layer of even though maybe you own the data, you still, you're probably not spinning up your own server like in your house, right? To host your website. Uh, you're probably renting servers from some web host. And so, you're trusting them that they're not going to take it down because their terms of service or whatever, or because they don't like what you're posting or because people file DMCA claims or whatever, or fake legal threats against them, you know, for hosting your content. We've seen a big trend for um, censorship, you know, 
lately on the internet and um, whether you like it or not or you think that it should have been censored or not it's kind of scary when anyone on a on a whim can can decide to deplatform you you know um so you could own your data but you definitely can be scrubbed from the internet so there are things uh with web3 like um you mentioned filecoin and stuff ipfs that's that's a decentralized file storage and it's actually possible to host websites with that now at least static websites so you can point your ens domain at your static website that's hosted in actual decentralized storage and that's it can't be taken down you know it can't be stopped basically and it's actually yeah. spread out if i understand this correctly across a bunch of people's unused computer uh processing space yeah, that have opted exactly. into the network right yeah which is fascinating because exactly. that's kind of efficient or environmental or whatever it's like it's using unused resources for a purpose it's kind of cool yeah for sure i'm also excited about there's there is one blockchain called deso uh short for decentralized social um basically they kind of built a new blockchain from the ground up that could handle um like large amounts of media like so like for example twitter equivalent or blogging equivalent of data and that's actually all stored directly on the blockchain where um, it's essentially a centralized i mean a decentralized database so when you write a blog post or your tweet or whatever it is it actually goes on the deso blockchain where it can't be removed where it can't be scrubbed or anything like that and where anyone can spin up their own twitter or their own facebook or their own wordpress.com and pull from that data that that sent that um decentralized database you know there's it's permissionless anyone can access it and index it and create their own front end so i think that'll be really interesting to see if we can integrate like wordpress using that as a database back end of some sort that's cool that's super cool and and drilling into what you've been up to at web3 wp as of this recording there were two main projects one is the um wapus which if you don't know is a um it's basically like kind of like the mascot of WordPress, a little character and individuals and companies and certain events kind of make their own character with their own branding and style and stuff like that. That's what a WAPU is. But can you tell us about that and the core contributor NFT project? Yeah, sure. Um, so you may have seen like on the WordPress news or whatever last year, we actually took the WAPU concept and kind of design and we we had some designers and stuff, and we actually created uh, 2,222 completely mm -hmm. unique Wapus. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we minted them as NFTs and, and, and sold them as NFTs so people could collect them and stuff. And that was kind of a fun way to, both for me, to learn like smart contract development and, and some of those underlying um, Web3 technology of NFTs and educate people like we released all that code open source and the tutorials and everything like that and also to raise a little bit of funds just to spark that kick that project off web3wp.com and uh, so that was a lot of fun and then the next project that we've been working on is the core contributor nft with the idea of being a rewarding uh, people who contribute code to wordpress so right now if you contribute on that WordPress about page and the announcement post, you can see like your name there, you know, and sometimes your, your avatar, I'm um, just saying, Hey, you know, a way of thanking people or recognizing people's contribution to open source. Um, but we were thinking it'd be really cool to use um, web three tools like NFTs or tokens to be able to reward, reward those contributors so they can mint like a collectible NFT uh, for each WordPress release that they contributed to. So um, we've been working on that. And actually just last month, I had all the commemorative, this 3D commemorative coins, you know, that will be the NFTs. So we had those completed by a designer. And uh, so hopefully should be rolling that out in the next few months um, to where people can actually mint for free uh, the collectible NFTs. Yeah. That's cool. Any uh, hints for the future of the next Web3 WP uh, idea or concept or not yet? Uh, th there is another one. We actually started work already on like a Web3 plugin for WordPress. Okay. Um, 
So right now it allows you like single sign on. So you can use your web three wallet like MetaMask to sign into WordPress and create, to create a user account. Um, so that's really cool. So you're actually using your own private secret keys, you know, that only, you know, to, to actually sign into WordPress and that can work across any number of WordPress installs. So that was kind of like the first feature we added. Um, and the next ones are probably going to be token gating to where you can use it kind of like a membership site. So if people own a certain NFT collectible or whatever, or token, um, then they would get, get access to private content or things like that. Um, so that way you can use like NFTs as like a membership thing. Is that, uh, would that be a plugin or would that involve a third party? Yeah, that would be part of the plugin. So, I've heard of, a, I heard an interview with somebody at the Unlock Protocol. It sounded yes. like something similar. Yeah, they're doing something similar. Yeah. But I know they kind of mentioned WordPress, but they weren't like exclusively focused on it. And, um, right. I think that token gating concept, especially for course creators and tr training based membership sites, the, the niche we're in and a lot of listeners here is a really interesting concept. Yeah, I think so too. And one of the cool things about token gating is, correct me if I'm wrong here, I guess it depends how you set it up, but like, let's say you, you got a, a token so now you have access to this course you can then sell that token to somebody else right or transfer yeah. yeah yeah usually nfts are transferable and they have kind of built-in financial plumbing so you can trustlessly like buy and sell and trade them um, yeah. in really unique ways and so it's a way of being able to um, like whether it's a ticket or a pass or 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 you purchase the membership to lift your LMS or whatever it is, you know, yeah. then that NFT is kind of like your, your ticket, you know, proving ownership of that. And it can be transferable, which is kind of cool. You, you've mentioned uh, like lift your LMS as an example. Like I, I see in the future plugin licensing being like that, like software licensing being NFTs that, you know, right. are more easily managed and transferred around and, uh, I think yeah. it really changes the game and how we think about affiliate marketing and, and all kinds of things, but most importantly, just access to the software and rights. For to sure. And you could do cool things like coding royalties into them. So yeah. say someone bought your Black Friday deal mm -hmm. as an NFT, and then later on they want to sell it, like when they're not using it, then they can sell it for more. And then every time someone sells that membership like to perpetuity perpetuity either you get a commission on each sale or they get a commission on each sale or some yeah. combination you know you can actually tie that into the code so it's enforceable and, and just the way it works it's kind of cool i think that's fascinating how far out do you think this future is where nfts are more mainstream like and more used for just kind of normal things outside of like art that we see a lot people think of it as like art now but yeah. like more utility tickets licensing things like that i mean i think it's starting to happen a lot uh, yeah i mean besides every major brand having their own nft already you know during kind of the boom in the last year yeah um there are a lot that are doing different tickets and things tied to that a lot of it is going to be um kind of simplified to where you might not even realize that it's an nft in the back end um, that it just seems like a normal digital thing that you purchased or whatever. Um, especially gaming is is a huge area where where that's really taking off right now. So a lot of games, whether you know it or not, like when you buy assets in them, um, whether it's like a skin or a dance or whatever it is, you know, yeah. um, in that game, it's actually an NFT. So it could actually be like traded or portable or whatever. Um within that game or even potentially between different games um, as compatibility cool. layers are figured out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's part of the challenge is like NFT is a, and then non-fungible token. And then these uh, wallets and things are a little hard to use for the mainstream or whatever. Right. And when that, when yeah. it kind of fades into the background and just powers reality yeah. is when it really goes off big. And like you said, it's already in a lot of places and we don't realize it. Yeah. Uh, one, could you kind of, since you understand the space so well, one of the things online educators run into is um, certificates, like certificates of completion and maybe also 
the whole trust issue. Like if an employer is trying to hire somebody and they, they see a certificate, but they want to make sure it's real or their education yeah. history is real proof of merit, um, you know, certificates on the blockchain. Can you kind of speak to the future of where we're heading of what's possible with, with like somebody's educational history and how they, how that works in web three or could work? Yeah, that's actually a really great use case. Um, I haven't thought much about it, but definitely um, there's there's things that are being worked on called like a decentralized identity. And that would be a way to use the blockchain to prove like your real identity or even a um, online identity, like a pseudonymous identity to where, for example, a lot of times now you have someone on Twitter or something, they may have a huge audience, or whatever, people trust them, but they don't know who they're who they are in real life you know they know their twitter handle username although that could be taken away and it can be easily copied by anyone you know um who are who are trying to pretend to be you uh but using web3 technology and things like like ens is is one kind of early attempt at that um but you can prove ownership by signing things or like when you create like an mt or things like that you can prove that you were the true creator um, because it's all tied to your cryptographic key. No one has your cryptographic key, so you're the only one that can sign messages and prove that you are that true person or true owner or true identity. Um, so when it comes to any kind of like organization or educational institution, they could definitely do that when they create credentials and things like that. Those can go on the blockchain. Um, and NFTs are kind of like a, a great use case or something like that because you can store a lot of metadata and different things with that. And um, you can tie that to uh, like that specific person or whatever. So they can prove that they're the uh, true owner and you could even turn off um, transferability, things like that. So there's something called a, a soul bound NFT. Have you heard of that? I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. So it's, that's kind of a great use case for that. So the idea being that it's an NFT and that it's one of a kind and only one person or one wallet can own it at a time. But that once it's issued, it's tied to a specific identity or or cryptographic key. So it's non-transferable. So that's something great for any kind of credentials or things like that where you don't want someone to be able to, you know, sell their diploma to someone else or transfer ownership on the blockchain. So that's that's that would be called a soul bound NFT. So that'd be like a great use case for that kind of thing that you're talking about for sure. One of the things to share just that really opened my mind to this whole world is like, we already kind of live in it. Like when you're born, you get like a social security number and then you have a driver's license. Like these right. contracts and these credentials already exist in a very centralized way in some database. Mm -hmm. And this is just like an evolution of that technology for the better in my view. Uh, for sure. Yeah, this is a, it's, what I'm saying is it's not like, this everything here is all new. It's actually better ways of doing things from even like real estate deeds as a contract or mm -hmm. um, a, a relationship at work, like an employment agreement. It's a contract that we're trying yeah. to make these things better uh, through this tech. Yeah. I think like if I, if I was the president or whatever, <laughs> for the government, I'll write you in, man. I would definitely, I would definitely, um, like create some of these things that can tie like credentials and stuff to the blockchain and you can do it in a what's really cool you can do it in a privacy protecting way so for example so you have a website that needs to restrict access to a certain age group right like mm -hmm. you, you can't you have to be over 13 or whatever to access or buy this or whatever it is um right now the only way they can do that is by some weird clunky thing where you like take a screenshot of your face and hold up your driver's license. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even that is subject to all kinds of abuse. Um, but with something like decentralized identity, you can actually just have them sign a message with their wallet, with their cryptographic key. And then that can release not how old they are or what their birthday is or what their name is. It could release only the data that, that they need yes or no are you of age or not you know so you're protecting wow. identity privacy all those kinds of things like that you're just and getting the variable that mattered right there exactly yeah. yeah and so you can do that with any kind of 
thing that needs to be verified, whether it's diplomas, credentials, whatever like that. You can maintain privacy in some really cool ways because you both trust that that source of truth, whether it's um, a government um, thing where they're putting that on the blockchain, you know, or wh whatever it may be. So, what um, in terms of blockchain, you know, outside of there's there's Bitcoin, and then you have the layer ones like Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, Cardano. Like, mm -hmm. how much do you have a view on the underlying chains of like where we're going, or is this just kind of like a massive um, experimentation experimentation phase where a lot of these will die, and we don't really know. Ethereum's really big right now, but it might change, might not. Like, what? How, right. Does the underlying chain matter? I mean, I think it does, like, especially when you want, um, like, when you look for that central source, you know, it's, it's like, what database are you using is what you're asking, you know? Yeah. Um, so Bitcoin, I think, has proven to be quite lasting, even though it's the original technology. And but that's part of its draw is that it's unchanged and it's been proven over so many years um, to be resilient. And so that's kind of seen as like the digital gold or whatever is your as your uh, like most trusted kind of source or whatever, and it's fully decentralized and that no one owns it. There's no there's no benevolent dictator or whatever you know who's yeah, it's really who's managing that product, yeah. which is as decentralized and open source as you can get. Um, and then you have kind of like all these new fancy stuff where it's kind of questionable how decentralized they are because like the nodes and things are controlled by a majority of people that have like certain invested stakes in it. You know, um, Ethereum is kind of my, that's my bet more long-term yeah. um, just because they're the originator of like smart contracts, which, which is basically enabled what is web three and um, yeah, they're not super scalable and can be expensive to like build things on. Um, but there's already tons of solutions there that utilize that as the source of truth, like layer twos and, and roll ups and things like that, that allow you to scale that to unlimited numbers, but still trust in the basic underlying um, decentralization of, of the Ethereum network itself. So. Cool. That's what that's what I'm betting on, <laughs> um, both in both in building, like when I code new things, and also like if I'm going to put money into it, I do it in in the Bitcoin and Ethereum kind of for long term. We're going to go back to Web two in a second, but if somebody out there is kind of getting curious about Web three, for you as a developer or as a WordPress professional, like what are some places you go to learn uh, about this new world and I mean, you've been in it for a while, but what, what are some resources that you could point people to? Yeah, well, first there's web3wp.com. We have a bunch of stuff on there, um, example code and things like that. Um, and then, gosh, I, you caught me out. Um, mostly like since me being a developer. You got a GitHub, um, like open source projects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. open source projects. Um, there's some really good like... Uh, like people that are on YouTube and, and Twitter and stuff, they're just doing good like content and tutorials and things like that. So there is a whole lot of noise out there about the investing side. Mm -hmm. um, but I think more important is understanding like the technology side um, that will get you a lot further in the long run. Um, so that's what I would look for. And there is plenty of good, good sources of content out there for that. And I'll just say for the... Um... For I'm I'm a not a developer myself. The uh, I really have learned a lot by some interviews on the the Real Vision um, crypto channel. They they do get mm. into the investing stuff, but they also have a lot of interviews that are purely around the technology and what's happening. Mm. Um, let's go to Web two a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> covering uh, everything. So this this podcast helps. Um, WordPress professionals and education entrepreneurs, and you've you're got a lot going on in, in the education space. Tell us about Campus Press and Edu Blogs. What are they? Sure. And, yeah. Tell us more. Well, my well, my day job, I'm the CTO of 
ink sub which is a weird name that no one knows and it basically its main product is wpmu dev which a lot of people are familiar with because it's one of the largest uh, wordpress businesses um and there. just real quick on that you guys sell do you sell all the plugins as one subscription or how does that work and you have um, hosting too yeah there's one off basically our idea is to create like all the core things that you need for wordpress so whether it's managed hosting, whether it's all your core plugins that include SEO and uh, forms and um, security, uh, image optimization. There's a core suite of like uh, eight plugins that that are included with that membership. And we do sell like plans of, of one off, you know, if that's really all you need. Um, but we also provide hosting and a lot of like really cool, like a real focus is on agencies. And, and people who are kind of like running WordPress sites. Um, and so we provide a, a whole suite of really useful tools for agencies all in one, one spot. So you can um, use our hub to manage all your sites remotely, automatic updates, um, uptime management, basically everything you need, including managed hosting, including uh, reselling. That's a big thing we've been focusing on. So we have all these really cool tools where you can white label our hub uh, for your clients and embed it on your own website. So you can do all your reselling and, and management of everything like that all under your own brand. And even our plugins can be white labeled that way too. So we don't have learning management. So you still got to use a <laughs> <laughs> lifter for that. But uh, yeah, so, th so that's what we do. And then we have kind of, some side things, Campus Press that you mentioned, which is enterprise hosting for um, mostly higher education. Um, so Tell us about that kind of client. Like, what do they need? Like, what are they, what makes their their need? Like, does each department have its own website or it's a giant multi-site or what is it? Yeah, we have different things. Uh, when we originally started out, really, we we're the like multi-site experts. So, um, and that was used a lot in education. And so, kind of focus on, on enterprise multi-site hosting for that. And so we'll have, you know, big name universities. We have, I'm not sure which ones I'm allowed to mention, but yeah. if, if you know the name of the university, there's a good chance we host them. Um, and um, can you describe, so yeah, we'll, can you describe what multi-site is if somebody doesn't know? Yeah, sure. Uh, multi-site is basically something that's kind of secret and hidden away in WordPress that you can enable and it allows one WordPress install to manage an unlimited amount of WordPress sites. So they share the user base. So like your same user login can be used across hundreds of different blogs or, or, or sites um, and they share the same code base. So if you have uh, one set of plugins and themes installed, then all those sites all share that same code base. So if you need to update WordPress, instead of updating 100,000, we have clients with 100,000 blogs, you know, or more um, hosted on us. And so obviously that's not really scalable to be updating or managing your plugin updates for 100,000 sites yeah. like that. So multi-site allows you to do that with one WordPress install. Um, but we'll of course, see, uh, at that scale, you need, you need a pretty big, powerful hosting <laughs> provider. And that's what we provide what you offer as well. What What's an example like structure of a university's web property? Like, yeah, yeah, like what do they have? So we have different ones. We have one um, that they have, uh, basically it's under their main domain, I think. And then like they have students, they can each set up their own kind of portfolio site blog. And that uses like a predefined template and theme. And it's all powered by their single sign-on. So they're still using their university login to create their blog and to sign in and stuff like that. And um, they create their own little portfolio site when they start as a student. And then throughout their time as a student, they're actually updating their portfolio there. So that's one use, use case. Um, probably our most popular is it'll be like one setup and they'll use it for all like the sub sites for like different departments, or, or groups or organizations, um, like sub organizations. So, because like a lot of times, or the yeah, a lot of times in, in a higher ed, they'll have 
every like little group, whatever they say, we need our own, our own website, you know, or we need to be able to like have our own blog or updates or whatever it may be. Um, so that way they can just create one big install and then it's super easy for them to use like a shared theme and design style and, and plugins and stuff like that um, so that they can uh, create their own like little branded like sub portals, you know, for the different sites for the university. How's that? Um... Does like the university typically have like an IT department with some WordPress pros in there that interface with you or are you guys doing all of it or how does that work? Yeah, usually there's there's someone, the the geek, you know, the resident geek, and they're <laughs> yeah. kind of the interface with us. So we manage the hosting. And then um, at that at that level, it's very much kind of like WordPress VIP to where uh, we're reviewing and vetting every like line of code that they want to commit or, or push yeah. customization, you know, to make sure that it can scale and that it has the security that the customer needs and things like that. Um, so they're kind of interfacing with with our developers and we do some custom client work for them too. Um, sometimes cool. if they need like a, a customization or theme built or things like that, then we do that. That's neat. WordPress at scale in, in universities and edu blogs. Is that what you said? The thing where the students have their own blog is that is that what edu blogs is, or is that something else? Uh, yeah, edu blogs is kind of like our WordPress.com, uh, but for education. So, okay. Um, that's targeted at mostly like individual teachers. So if like a campus isn't trying to have their own custom thing, mm -hmm. then a teacher can can spin up an edu blog. And they can have their students like register like underneath it and they each have their own little blogs and use that for teaching and things like that. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's get, let's round the, uh, land the plane back to where we started, which <laughs> yeah. is uh, the uh, Imagine AI. And then let's start with infinite uploads since that's more um, uh, just as we talk about WordPress site management and stuff like that. What does, tell us about that. and 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 also, how much of that can can get involved in video um, yeah. hosting? Like, because I get this question from course creators who, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they may not want to put their stuff on Vimeo, Vimeo or whatever. Exactly. Have but the then there's the challenge. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about it. Or and Amazon's like too hard to manage or whatever. So right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like, kind of the idea is infinite up of infinite uploads was just making like cloud storage accessible to the masses um because there have been other plugins like s3 offload plugin and things like that that allow you to extend wordpress to like cloud storage but it's very complicated to set up and you have to get all the permissions then you have to get a cdn somewhere else and configure that and all the dns and it's it can be a mess if you're not a really technical person you know so our idea our idea was just to make it super simple where you just click connect and then that creates all the storage and secures it and sets up the CDN for you and handles the syncing of media back and forth to the cloud and all that, you know, just with, just with a few clicks. Um, so that's kind of the idea of infinite uploads. And that is a huge pain point for large sites, whether it's like a multi-site or especially probably learning management um, sites that have courses and stuff. Um, they can have a lot of media and um, PDFs. They need, yeah, PDFs, whatever it may be, okay. you know, and, and be able, need to be able to handle all that. So I think Infinite Uploads is pretty helpful with that. As far as video, um, it works great for that too, um, in that it serves it, uploads it, and serves it from our cloud. Um, but a lot of things, a lot of our customers, that's one of the things that they probably are most asked for features. They say, oh, we want, we don't want like to use Vimeo or something like that. Cause yes, you can upload, you can encode your own video, then upload it and then embed it in your plugin or video player or whatever. But that's really technical. You know, people want a YouTube like solution where, where you can just upload any file size and then it converts it to all the different sizes and embeds it for you. So we're actually working on that right now. Um, it's in development. So that's going to be an add on for um, infinite uploads to make it's super easy to where you can just upload your video file and then it creates, you know, five or six different versions for all different sizes and, and, and browsers and devices and everything like that. And, and has a fully customizable player and different things like that. So that'll be great for 
people who are doing online courses because I know that's a huge need for them so they can do that without so not only is it encoding it's hosting and embedding and, and customization and all that so yeah that's coming soon <laughs> all right well that's infiniteuploads.com and let's go back into uh imagine that's i m a j i n n dot a i so this there's a challenge with wordpress sites where uh we want to put in a picture but we don't want to get stuck with some copyright infringement or we don't know where to get high quality pictures right uh, tell us tell us what we can do with imagine well i'm sure it's you'd have to be under a rock to not have seen like all the developments in the last few months it's been crazy you know starting with dolly from open ai and then google showing demoing their own stuff um there's this called image gin, I think, and Facebook has their own. And basically these are um, large AI models that have been created using billions and billions of images scraped from the internet and labeling them, tagging them, connecting them to text that describes them and then training these giant AI models that allow you to just by typing in what you wanna see, create an image or, or artwork um, and it's just magical. The first time you try it, <laughs> there's there's no other way to describe it that you can type in what you want to see. I tried it, and this is on my phone. I just typed in like "shaman in the forest," and this oh, wow. this, this this really cool picture came up. And I was just like, "Yeah, it, it's, it's the first time you see it. You're like, whoa, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, it's magical. There isn't <laughs> yeah. any other way to describe it. Yeah. Um, and so these other models that have that were developed and kind of announced and showed off and stuff. They've been closed um, this year. Um, OpenAI gave like, they had a wait list access. Everyone was trying to get in, you know, uh, but they're very restrictive of what you could do with it and how you could use it. In fact, it was only, I think last week that they finally created an API, um, a limited API so that you could start to try to integrate it into other products. Um, but what actually happened is a, um, uh, some millionaire who's like, I love AI is really cool. I think he's actually like some hedge fund guy. <laughs> he, uh, a few months back, he's like seeing what's going on. And he's like, I'm just going to donate a bunch of money and to a group of kind of an open source group of AI researchers and say, okay, I want you to build your own model that we're going to release open source to the public. Um, because, and this is called stable diffusion. And see, the, the problem with AI is it hasn't been accessible to the masses except through big tech corporations mm -hmm. because, first of all, this technology is like so new and revolutionary, but also like to train a model of that size, it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars in compute time for paying for all those GPUs in the cloud to be crunching all those images and, and to train the models, you know? So it's not accessible like for someone just to create that themselves because <laughs> it costs a lot of time and a lot of money to do it. Um, even if you can gather enough data when you have tech giants like Google and Facebook, I mean, they have unlimited amounts of access to data that they can use to train this stuff, you know, and huge budgets. So anyway, so he donated a bunch of money to be able to, to be able to train this model called uh, stable diffusion. And so it was released um, at the end of August, um, very beginning of September. And the minute that came out, it was like off to the races, you know, the power of open source yeah, and of people building products of developing new technologies and ways to adapt and, and use that, that model, that base model um, to do new and exciting things. Uh, it's been amazing, you know. So as soon as that came out, I was frantically looking. Okay, this is amazing. It's the new gold rush, you know, the AI gold <laughs> rush. How how can I get that to run um, like in WordPress, you know, or be useful for WordPress? And so um, that's when we dropped um, that plugin called Imagine, uh, which you can use right now. It's on the is on the is, is on the repository. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and um, uh, the only downside is that it takes a lot of compute power to run this, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, we actually have to spin up like cloud servers with a 100 GPUs, which are like a $20,000 GPU. 
you know, <laughs> to run it at any kind of like useful speed, you know, um, like even if like they've only recently gotten it to work on like the latest Max, you know, okay. and that takes like one minute for one image. So that's comparison, you know, and the compute power that it takes to, to do this. So so what, what we do is for the plugin is we actually give you a certain amount of free credits so you can try it. You can generate a whole bunch of images. Uh, see how it likes and then we have some paid plans if you want to get more credits or, or subscribe to a certain amount of like credits to use but the idea is that you have this right within wordpress so when you're creating a post or page or course you can just click that button to insert that new gutenberg block or, or use our admin page where you can do it and then you can just type in the, what you want to see as an image so whatever it may be you're only limited by your imagination you know empowering the visionaries i love that Exactly. Do you have and, some statement that's like a lot of people kind of sometimes make fun of the metaverse mm -hmm. <laughs> or I mean, it's like a it's a term, you know, uh, you know, like uh, Facebook or Meta's thing where the people don't have legs or whatever. But if we actually think optimistically about the future of online learning and the metaverse or whatever, like what do you see out like where's what is the big opportunity with the metaverse and how is it different from uh you know perhaps just websites or um yeah what what, what yeah metaverse the metaverse of learning what what would you like to see happen yeah i think a lot of that is still to play out like yeah of course like with facebook or zuckerberg and all this tying kind of metaverse to being vr necessarily like to me like i have my own definition of metaverse like to me Think about how much percentage of your time you spend behind a screen now, right? Mm -hmm. And compared to 10 years ago or whatever. And to me, like the metaverse really just is just a continuation of us moving our lives into a digital world. So, I mean, now your job is through a screen, you know, your, your friends are through a screen and your social life is through a screen. Your entertainment is through a screen. Um, and so I, I think that we're already in some respects living in a metaverse. Um, yeah. and so it's just a matter of, of where you're going to be spending that time hanging out or working or whatever it may be. So I'm not convinced that that's going to be VR. I mean, I think yeah. that'll be part of it, but I don't think that anytime soon we're all going to be living and doing our work and everything goggles. In some, yeah, <laughs> in goggles, you know, um, but I think as a trend, yeah, that's where we're going. And that's where like, like uh, LMS is, that's, that's just time. That's just a part of that, you know, when it comes to learning in the metaverse, you know, in that digital world and being able to make that accessible to more people um, without geographic restrictions, time restrictions, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there'll be like new developments, like, being able to do learning through VR or things like that. There's, there's stuff that are going to be um, really powerful, you know, using those, those tools and stuff. But I think more in general, it's, it's better to think of it as just the overall trend of us living more and more in the digital world, you know, and interacting more in a digital world. And one piece of advice, it's good to get out of the building and not spend full time in the metaverse. As a <laughs> WordPress professional, we go to these things sometimes called word camps. And I actually met Aaron in person uh, yeah. recently outside of the metaverse. And that was uh, <laughs> that was good to see in person because you're right. We do spend, you know, I probably spend at least my work life, 99% of it online. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that 1% is cool to get out, maybe more than 1%, but. Um, well, that's Aaron Edwards. He's at Infinite Uploads. You can find him at imagine.ai. You want to spell that for us one more time? Sure. I-M-A-J-I-N-N dot Aaron, AI. Aaron's also, a, a, you know, has a lot of cool stuff going on. You can find his home site at uglyrobot.com. It kind of links out to a lot of things. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We went into the Web3. We went into AI. We went into WordPress multi-sites, the education niche, WordPress and universities, yeah. uh, creating images from your mind, profile pictures, and, uh, and you know, how to manage media for course creators. So, Aaron, thanks for coming on the show. 
any final words for the people or anywhere else you want to send them? Aaron's also on Twitter. It's uh, uh, Ugly Robot on Twitter. Or Ugly, Ugly Robot, Robot Dev. Dev. Yeah, yeah, D-E-V. <laughs> on, on Twitter. Any final yeah. words for the people? Um, no, I just, uh, I guess just I'm interesting to see how people use AI and some of these AI tools that I've been building for learning management. I think that'll be really cool to see people find some like interesting, cool use cases for that. So show me what you got and hit me up at Twitter at ugly robot dev. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming to the show, Aaron. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Chris. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. Did you enjoy that episode? Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.